So hi everyone, uh, I'm Florimont and uh, here with me is Ali. So we are the uh, organizers and uh, designers for the, the this competition, the Motor Insurance Market Simulation. And uh, today we're going, we're going to show you how you can uh, easily sign up, uh, submit a model and see it being evaluated in under five minutes. So first of all, uh, you know, go to the insurance challenge page and you should be able to see uh, what I'm seeing right now. The first step that we, you need to do in order to be able to participate is of course to accept the rules. Um, so in this case, I'm already logged in with an account. Uh, if you haven't, go and sign up uh, and I probably it takes about 30 seconds. Uh, you just need an email, email address. And once you've done that, uh, well, first step is to click participate. Um, and this will take you to the challenge rules. Uh, don't do what I'm going to do, so please read them <laughs> carefully. And uh, once you have read them, and if you're satisfied, if you're happy with our terms and conditions, uh, well, just simply say that you read them, and that should be enough. Um, once you've done this, you'll be able to create a submission, uh, and this submission will be evaluated and will be part of the leaderboard. All right. So once you've uh, once you've accepted the rule and signed up, you should be able to see like these two two buttons to create submissions. Um, but that's actually not the easiest way to submit. Uh, for this, I'd advise that you that you click on the how to submit button. That will take you to uh, this lovely page here. Um, so in this game, you can you can actually submit via zip file if you want, and uh, there are some more instructions elsewhere. But the easiest way to submit is really through a collaboratory notebook. In this case, we're going to do the art notebook just to explain uh, the concepts and how it works here. Um, so if you've never used Colab, Colab is similar to Jupyter Notebooks, Excel it runs on the cloud, uh, and then you can get safe, uh, things saved to either GitHub or, or Google, as you wish. So here that you're going to see that this is a notebook that you shouldn't have access to. It's, it's sort of the template, so the first thing to do as we know here, is to create a copy of this notebook and save it in wherever you like. I'm going to save it in Drive, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. So once you have the, so you can see that it's loading. I'm just going to uh, close the previous window so I don't edit it by accident. All right. Um, um, so let's name this my very own art model. All right. All right, so this notebook actually incorporates a lot of magic that allows you to interact to interact with the AI crowd page without ever leaving the notebook. Uh, and there are a few constraints for this to work properly. I'm going to walk you through them uh, one by one as we fill in this notebook with a very basic model and, and submit at the end. Um, so as you will see in this notebook, there are a few functions. Actually, there's a, a number of functions that you can fill in. And all the code that is within these functions will be included in your submission, neatly packaged automatically and sent to the aircraft server for evaluation whenever you so choose. Uh, however, you note that every piece of code that you would write that is not included within these functions would be automatically excluded. And that's that's pretty important because it might mean that you're, even if your code runs perfectly smoothly on the notebook, uh, you might see inconsistencies or errors when you submit to the, the server. That shouldn't normally happen. And if you actually follow the structure, it, it would probably be fine in that sense. Um, so the first thing that you need to do is to initiate a notebook. And what this is going to do is going to, going to download some, some setup scripts and run them in the background in such a way that your notebook will be able to communicate um, with the aircraft server. Takes a bit of time here. Uh, and when that's running, we can actually do the second part, which is now that you know this notebook knows how to communicate with their crowd and so on, it needs to be able to be linked to your account. So that when you use this notebook and send code to the server, the server knows that it's actually your your code that is being sent and it must be linked to your air code account. And the way this is done is by uh, just you know clicking on this link and that will take you to a page on air crowd that gives you your API key. Um, and that's a you know, pretty long string here that you can just uh, fit in here. And that will be all that you need in order to submit the code to Aircrowd. Yeah, so right. just a note on that one. Um, yeah. Right now you can see Florimond's API key, but Florimond will later go and refresh it and change it. Anybody who has your API key can submit on your behalf. So 
make sure yeah. to keep that all private. <laughs> yeah, that's actually, yeah, that's very important if you don't want other people to you know, uh, submit pretending it's you. Identity theft is not a joke. Um, so the, the next step is to download the data set. Know that you've uh, put your API, uh, your API key, and if, you're accept if you've accepted the rules, you should be able to do that. Um, this is not very large. It's a few megabytes, so this shouldn't take more than a few, a few seconds. Um, and why is it noting? Let's talk about the packages, because that's a pretty important thing. So as you can see here, we have you know, two functions for to import and load the packages. It's extremely important that you fill these in with all the, all the packages that you use in your code. Even if the package is already part of the, uh, of the notebook environment, or if you've already downloaded it in our studio or something, it's extremely important that you include each and every one of the packages that you use here. Otherwise, we cannot guarantee that the code will run on AI Crowd. Um, so in this case, what we're just going to do, we're just going to use the R part package. I'm just going to comment out these two. Um, that's going to install and load the packages in your environment. OK. Um, yeah, here we go. OK. So I don't have it on that. We can have a look at uh, the data. So just you know, open it. Um, OK, that's kind of cool. So as you can see, there are many columns here. Uh, I'm, we're not going to explain them right now, but you can go on the uh, card page. There's a data dictionary, the details, everything you need to know about these, uh, these data. Like, so basically, every row is an insurance contract. And then you have a bunch of, uh, a bunch of data points for that, for that contract. OK. So now that we have the data, the first step that we need to do is to actually process it in something that can be used by uh, learning procedures. And so that's why we have this function, a preprocess x data. Um, and just to start with, uh, to have a super basic model, we're gonna we're gonna do something super simple. We're just gonna um, we're just gonna like take two columns. So these are uh, the sex of driver one, so the main driver, and the weight of the vehicle. Are, we're just gonna restrict our data set or data to only these two columns. Uh, we're gonna transform the sex into a factor. And then we're gonna, since for some vehicles, we don't know the weight I've been removed from the data set or it wasn't collected. We're just gonna impute the missing data points uh, using the mean of the column. All right. And return X clean here. Um, I mean, clearly okay. we've, uh, we've rehearsed this a couple of times, but we were going through with this uh, with this set of features because specifically vehicle weight is one that has a couple of NAs inside the column yeah. so that you can see how to handle it. Yeah, yeah. That's a trick. Um, so now we come to the, the, you know, the really interesting stuff is how do you define a model? So your pricing model, um, we need to be trained, of course, given the data that you have. And then you're going to have to predict prices, uh, claims and prices from it. Uh, and so there's a couple of functions here that you have to define that will sort of be used together to define your modeling and your pricing. And the first one is the training part. So with, this is with the fit model function. Uh, and this is going to take like the, the, the training data and input and the, the training claims and input, and it's going to return a train model. And there are no constraints to what that train model can be. It can be anything as long as it's consistent with the predict functions that we have further down the line. Uh, in our case, we're just going to do something pretty simple. Uh, well, first of all, of course, we're going to you know, clean the data here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go with a, a severity and a frequency model. Uh, in our case, a frequency model. So that's predicting whether or what is the probability for a given contract to incur an accident. Uh, we're just going to use a simple GLM here, and uh, for the severity, which is the you know the expected value of the claim given that the contract has an accident, we're going to use a, a linear model. Um, well, I mean, of course, you're free to use whatever you want with the data and uh, the packages that you have defined, and then we we simply like, take the frequency. The... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say I think that's actually just a mean model, so. Oh, my bad. Yeah, of course. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. 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 We're just, we're just um, and then uh, 
to define the train model, this can be, as I said, this can be any form, of any kind of object. So here we've decided to group both of them together. Um, in this list with like these these keys, but th this is arbitrary. And again, as long as it's consistent with the fit functions, uh, with the train, the predict functions, sorry, uh, that will work. All right. So we have this uh, moment of truth. Let's see if it runs. Yep, seems to be okay. And let's have a quick look at what the model is. Up. Oh, yeah, there we go. Cool. That's kind of what we expected. All right. Um, but no, once we've, you know, we have our, our SIF model and everything is fine. Uh, we have, I'm sorry, our model and everything is fine. The next step is to save the model to five. And this is really important because your model can take arbitrarily long uh, to train, essentially. So when you submit your code to AI Cloud, we want by default to retrain your model. Uh, it's important, I mean, it's in the competition rules that in order to win the prize, you, we need to be able to retrain your model. But this is something I will check later. And actually, in the, the submissions that you do uh, throughout the, con the competition, we're very unlikely to, to retrain your model. So it, this can take arbitrarily long. But of course, uh, but for us to be able to evaluate your code relatively quickly, what we're going to do is you're first going to save your model on file once it's been trained. And when you send everything to AI Crowd, we're just going to load this train model uh, and use your predict function. Um, and so we've provided some pretty basic code to, to do this. Like in the vast majority of cases, I think you shouldn't have to modify this. Uh, if you get if you're into issues, we have a, a discourse board post here that you can can consult that should be able to to save the issues. But in, in this case, like we have a pretty simple model that will work uh, beautifully. Um, all right, and then we get to the fun part is that once you have your trained model, you can, this model will be used on data that you haven't seen in order to get some prices and to get some estimate of the claims. So the first part is predicting the expected claim that a contract will incur. And this is what is used in the RMC leaderboard. Um, so again, what this takes as, as argument is first your model. And again, that can be anything as long as it's consistent with how you use it in predict. And then some data sets. Uh, as you can see, we're gonna, excuse me, we're gonna test it with the training data, but uh, this, this will be unseen data uh, that lies on the server. Um, and so what we're just gonna do here, we're gonna, uh, we're going to uh, simply use our model up as such. So first, Preprocess the claims and then use both models to predict the frequency, severity, and then take the product. And that's going to be our claim estimate. So oh, let's just check that this runs. Yep, beautiful. Fantastic. So, and then the last step is uh, how you price contracts. So, our game is not just about predicting claims and predicting you know, uh, the expected loss, the expected cost of a contract for the insurer. There's also a pricing component. And that's, you're free to do whatever you want here. You're free to, for instance, completely ignore any form of uh, expected claims and just go with your intuition on how you should price this or, or do whatever arcane thing that you want. Um, of course, it's probably better if you incorporate uh, the, cl the expected claims somehow. Uh, but yeah, so this is, this is your secret sauce. This is here you can do whatever you want. And you can see that the function basically behaves in the exact same way as uh, predict expected claim, in that it takes your model and it takes some data. And all you have to do is predict some prices. And here we're going to be um, extremely greedy. We're just going to take, um, we're just going to take the prices, uh, the, sorry, the expected claim, and we're going to have a nice um, margin of 50%, just, just to be on the safe side, right? Okay, and then again, let's try let's try this out. Let's see what we get at the end. Okay, all right, it seems to be running fine. We get prices. That's cool. All right. Um, and now, just before we can submit, there's one last check that we need to run. So here we have defined all of the functions that are needed for uh, for the code to run on the server. Like there's a training, there's a loading and saving the data, there's a pre-processing, there pre and both of the predict functions. But as per the competition rules, there is one check that your model must satisfy in order to be accepted for the, the pricing competition. And that is, it must have positive uh, monopoly profits on your training data. Um, and so here we wrote like a 
little bit of code that allows you to, to check that this is the case. As you can see, for a simple model with a 50% uh, margin, well, we, of course, we pass the test. All right. And so if you pass the test here, that's basically all you need to do. If you've accepted the rules, if your code is fine, then you can just simply run this cell. And there's going to be some air code magic in the background that is will just simply send your code to the server and run it. As you can see, like you get a, a nice table here that uh, gives you some information about your submission, other submission. And let's just have a look at uh, what this is. As you can see, the submission, or well, you have some temporary zeros, but it's currently evaluating. And in a few minutes, we should be able to see what the result is going to be. You can see, uh, like the code has been sent to the server, it's been running. So as you, you can see like the, the several steps here and, and see where your model is currently at. So the packages are fine. Uh, predictions on the training sample, just to make sure that the code runs. And this is where you'd get actually much more feedback because we're not giving you that much of detailed feedback on, on the testing sample, of course, because it's secret. So this is to make sure that your code runs and we're generating the predictions for the leaderboard and we're going to evaluate them. So let me see. Oh, let's see. All right, and just like that, it's done. As you can see, we have a respectable score of 503.87, which puts it somewhere in the leaderboard. Um, hint, it's not gonna be very high up in the leaderboard, of course, because this is literally one of our baselines. Uh, let's have a look at what the leaderboard looks like here. Um, yeah. So yeah. Uh, I hope this clears things up. Um, and yeah, we're looking forward to your submissions to our aircraft server. And hopefully, this is going to be fun for you as well. Yeah. And there you are. You're at number 153. <laughs> yeah. Remarkable, isn't it?